Welcome back for part two of this video. We are looking at how you can use Excel to do some simple coding of a sports match. I've chosen football here and I have got a few buttons on the right for player names and in the center some match events with some outcomes above it. And just before I push on, just a reminder, if you haven't checked out Excel for Analysts, you can go to thevideoanalyst.com and have a look. It's just a 10-hour video series looking at the basics of how to use Excel if you are in the performance analysis game. Anyway, I wanted to take you through the next step. And one of the things to do is to make sure you are accounting for errors. So if you code an event incorrectly, you want to be able to correct it. You'll never remember to do it afterwards, so it's good to be able to do it on the fly. And a way to do that is to add some data validation to these cells. So I'm assuming that if I am coding a whole game, I might get something like a thousand rows. So let's just allow for that. I'm in row E10 now and I could drag all the way down. Let's say to row 1000, go up to the data validation menu, choose list, and because I'm on a PC I can hit F3. These are all the lists that I've already got set up and we want to choose list outcome. And if I do that, we get a drop down list of our three possible outcomes. And if I wanted to change that one from neutral to positive, I could. Simple as that. And so if you're coding something, you make a mistake, you simply find that row quickly and change it. Now let's do it for the other two as well. Now I copied and dragged, but there's a quick way to select here. I'm clicked in cell D10 now. If I go up here and choose D1000, before I press enter, I'm going to hold down the shift key. And that has now selected all the way between the first cell, which was D10, and the bottom cell, which is D1000. Data validation, list, F3, and we have got events. And so if I didn't pick the right event, I could change it. Final one to do, it's a good way to practice as well. So when you click between two cells, if you hold the shift key down, it selects everything between them. So I'm holding down shift now, and I select C18, and it selects all the cells between 10 and 18. So that's how that first trick worked. I have C10 selected. I go up, type C1000 in the name box. Before I hit enter, I hold down the shift key, and it just does that selection for me. It's a very useful trick when you're selecting large amounts of cells. F3, and we want names. So if I click the wrong name, I could change it pretty easy. So there we are. We've got now a bit of protection in there. We could go in and correct anything we like. And so the way the code works is it just pastes in some text and that doesn't destroy the data validation. So let's say I was coding, I make a mistake, there's another really useful shortcut that you should know about. If I double click on the bottom margin of this cell, it takes me to the last entered row. Made a mistake, change it to that, control home, and I'm back to my coding area, and that's only going to take you a few seconds, and hopefully you haven't really missed anything. If you're scrolling down 500 rows and trying to find something, it could be a bit of a problem. So we've now gone through 45 minutes. We've got a whole bunch of data. I've got another sheet called Analysis Pivot. I want to copy the data to that. So let's say the half is just finished, and I've got 10 minutes before the start of the next half. Select the top row, Control-Shift-Down arrow, selects everything, Control-C copy, go here and paste it in. What I want to do is a little bit of positional analysis. And so for that I need position. On the config panel, I've filled in just a random position for each of the athletes. And if I select these two columns, you can see I've given it a name called Table of Player Details. And what's good about that is that name is in the first column. 
So when names in the first column, we can do VLOOKUP. As soon as I type VL, VLOOKUP appears in the auto select menu, hit tab, and I'm now inside the open bracket and I can start to enter my VLOOKUP function. What do I want to look up? The name. Where do I want to look it up? Well, we've got a table. I can't remember what it's called, so I'm just going to type table. And you can see I use a consistent format. And so table of player details, I can select from the list. And I've used a really sensible name there, so I can be sure that that's the right. The position is in column two of that, and I want an exact match. So I can either double click on this and choose false, or simply type a zero and I'll get the same effect. And there it is, midfield. Just in case I've done something wrong, I always like to put an if error around the outside. Double click, send it down. And so there we can see it's populated all 500 or so of those rows. Now I've done something on the config panel that I want to explain. I've made a little table that lists all the possible options that can be selected for a code. We've got five different events and each of them can have a positive, neutral or a negative outcome. And so that makes for 15. So 5 times 3 is 15. I've got 15 rows in this table. And for each of these events, I've just made up some numbers. It doesn't really matter what they are. But I've basically said that every time a defender does something, it's worth this many points. Every time a midfielder and every time a striker does something. And the reason I've put different weightings in there is that it's a striker's job to score goals, have a shot, or do an assist. It's a defender's job to make a block or a tackle. So I've weighted things in a certain way to allow for things to be a little bit position specific. It's like selecting KPIs for a player. So we've got this grid and what I need to do is pull in the points into this grid. Let's go back to the config page. Just want to select this and see what I called it. Up in the top corner I've gave it, given it a name, Table Action Points. So let's look at that. We can use VLOOKUP. What do we want to look up? Well, this is a little bit tricky because we've got half the name here and the other half here. So we can join it, event and neutral together. And now I'll just put the comma in there. Going up to my formula bar, I can select those two on a PC I can hit F9 and you can see that's what Excel is reading it as purposeful pass neutral and that matches to what we've got in our config panel and so if I type table here we called that action points I called a table action points because it's got a number of points for each type of action now this is the tricky bit we need to find what column it's in based upon a column index number due to their position I can do this in a little bit of a fancy way here, but I don't want to lose you. So what I'm going to do is escape, and I'm going to start this again. This is how you might do it if you're not so good with your Excel formulas. So I've just put a cell there called Combined Code, and I'm dragging it out a little bit. I'm going to use an ampersand to join those two together. So that's our first task. Double click, send that down. Next thing I'm going to do, put a little column identifier in there. Equals, match. We're going to find out which column midfield is in, just to save us the hassle of including it in the other formula. If I look up that name in the config panel in the top row, it's going to give us a number that tells us which column. So what that's done is significantly reduce the complexity of the lookup formula. For those that are pretty good with their formula, 
I'm going to do it in one go. I'm going to call it points complex. And point simple, just so both options are next to each other. So for points complex, let's go back to what we were doing before. We're doing a VLOOKUP, we're looking up the event, combined with the outcome. Where are we looking it up? We've got a table called action points. And the column index number can be found by doing a match of the position in the top row of that table. And we want for our VLOOKUP an exact match. Now because we combined with an ampersand two columns, we need to hold down Control and Shift when we hit Enter. That creates an array formula and it puts a squiggly bracket around the outside. Now zero might make you think we've got this wrong, but that's probably just the amount of points we put in place for a neutral purposeful pass. As we double click and send it down, we can see that that assumption was correct now because all these other ones are coming up with a specific number and that looks pretty good to me. Now if we do it in the more simple way, using our helper columns, what are we looking up? Looking up that. Where are we looking it up? Table of action points. What column are we looking in? We've already figured that out. That's here in H. And we've got false. And so that formula is a lot simpler. It's giving us the same answer. And so we can be confident that the way we've done it is correct because they're both giving us the same outcome. One other thing I want to do, and this will be useful in a subsequent video, is identify which minute we're in. And so you can see it's just got 0009 with a whole bunch of colons. And if we click on it, it actually reads that as 9 seconds past midnight. It's actually an interesting function that I almost never use, but it's called minute. And if I click on this, it tells me it's the zero minute. Now that doesn't make any sense at all, because between zero and one is the first minute of a game. So I'm simply going to add one. And if we just randomly pick one, such as this row here, we can see that it was at 13 minutes and 16 seconds, and that's the 14th minute. And so that makes sense this minute function is actually really clever and useful. So I've got a cool data set now that we can start to do a few things with. This video I'm going to do real simple pivot table by clicking on insert pivot table, put it on this worksheet right up the top here just with one empty column in between. I just scroll to the right gives us a bit more real estate to play with. I'm going to pull the athlete name down. I'm going to put position above it, and so we've got a little position classification there. We've got five different events, so let's have a look at that by pulling it into the columns. And it doesn't matter which one of these two points we put in there. I'm going to put point simple in. I'm going to close out of this. By default, if it's a number, the pivot table uses sum, and that's correct in this instance. And so we've got now how many points each player has accumulated in those five different categories, as well as a grand total. And now if I right click over here and choose sort, Let's see if I can do this. Sum of points simple. And so what it's done is inside each position group, it is sorted by points from highest to lowest. So Andy Johnson has got the highest score for a defender. 
Jimmy for midfielders, and Dave for strikers. And so that's not a bad table. We haven't even had to do that much work to get it. So we've got some simple stats. We can report back and say certain players are performing well versus other players. Let's have another little look at a second pivot table. We've kept it on the same sheet. Insert pivot table existing worksheet. Let's put it across to the right up at the top. One column in between should be enough for us. Let's pull the event into rows. Let's pull the outcome into columns. And instead of pulling in the points, what we can choose is a text field. If we do a text field such as name, it'll do a count. When you use a number, pivot tables default to sum, but for text it defaults to count. So if I pull that in, get rid of this, we've now got a pivot table which is telling us something about how many of each have been done that are negative, neutral, positive and otherwise. I always like to go in the design tab and change it to tabular form. I just think that's better. So I'm going to do that to both pivot tables. Very little changes, but it just lays things out a little bit better. In particular, in an instance like this, where we've got a double identifier at the beginning, both position and name. And so now what we've got is two pivot tables. It's telling us frequencies on the right. It's telling us points on the left. We've got a player sort of rating, if you like, happening. And we've got different aspects of play being evaluated on the right-hand side too. So I could simply replicate this. It's never good putting one um, below the other one, but I'm going to do it here anyway. And that's for one reason. That's because I know that there's only ever going to be five rows. Because unless I add a new event, we're not going to get another row. So the reason why that's risky is when one table expands, if there's another pivot table in the way, you get all sorts of problems. What I just wanted to do was go to the Analyze tab, bring back up the field list, and replace name with one of the points. And so what we've got now is um, up the top, we've got the count or the frequency. So I'm just going to over type that frequency and points. So I've got frequency and points now telling us something a little bit more about what's being successful and what's not. For example, are we having any impact with our dribbling or carries? Is our passing working out or not? So anyway, some simple analysis with pivot tables. It wouldn't be my preference, I don't think. In the next video, what I'm going to do is some more analysis using formula. And when I do a formula analysis, it's going to allow us to create a bit of a template that can database the results from one match to make them available for comparison to any future matches. So this is part one of the analysis, part two coming up shortly.